to start to start doing problems with me, you know, on your calculator or maybe later on going through them to make sure that you can get the same answers as I do. But also yesterday I did a problem in lab and I totally pushed a couple buttons wrong and I put up an answer that was way wrong and someone called caught me on it. And I really appreciate that because, you know, when you're talking and you're pushing buttons, it's really easy to do something like that. So it's really important if I make a mistake that you catch me. I don't make a lot of them, but you know, I do. So, um, you know, but you know, most importantly, you want to make sure you can get everything on your calculator that I'm doing. All right. So let's go ahead and go to this. All right, let's minimize that and scooch that over, make it bigger. All right, and then I want the chat to appear just in case I need it. Just pop that over here for right now. All right, so we've gone through what's how to tell how many significant figures something has, which digit is the guess. Remember, the last significant figure is the guess, and that's important to know as well. All right, uh, now we're going to deal with, well, when I add, subtract, multiply, divide, how do I handle sig figs in operations? So let me just go ahead and do that. Remember, SF is sig figs. And I'm only going to do this, I'm going to just do a couple examples briefly because we're going to do a bunch of problem solving and it'll come into play. All right, so the bottom line is this. When you are done, you're only allowed one guess in your answer. So remember, significant figures are all measured values plus one guess. So you're only allowed one guess in your answer. And so therefore, you have to round your answer appropriately. You round so there's only one, you, uh, here, let's do this. You cut off after the first guess. And round appropriately. All right. So the two types of operations we're going to deal with are addition, subtraction, and multiplication division. So when you add and subtract, really just think of it that way. So what you're going to do when you add and subtract, you're going to line up the, the, the numbers, find the first guess, and cut it off after the guess. So for example, if I have the number, um, let's see, I go, uh, let's go 12.3 plus one point two, six. All right. When I add these numbers together, that three on the 12.3 is a guess. I use an arrow internally just to keep track of what my guess is. Uh, sometimes on an answer key, I might make it a different color, but it just helps me keep track. The six on this number is a guess. When I add these up, 13.56, you see now I have two guesses but I can't have two guesses, I'm only allowed one. So I'm gonna cut off my answer like this right here. And so a more correct answer would be 13.6. Now, for rules of rounding, just do whatever you've been taught in the past. Um, typically, if you look at the number you're dropping, if it's greater than five, you round up. If it's less than five, you round down. I think nowadays they say if it's five or greater, you round up. So since this was a six, I rounded the five to a six. But just be consistent because if you're off by one in the last decimal place, it doesn't matter because that last place is a guess anyway. So if I called this 13.5 or 13.7, technically that's still a correct answer. Now it's interesting also when you add and subtract, the number of significant figures can change. So watch carefully. I notice at no time do my fingers leave my hands. All right. So if I take the number 9.1, which has two significant figures, and I add to it 8.7, which also has two significant figures, all right, I get 17.8. And again, now I have three sig figs, but I only have one guess. So you see, I went from two sig figs to three sig figs. 
So when you add and subtract, the number of significant figures can change. And similarly, if I had um, 13.9 minus 13.6, if I'm gonna do this subtraction, each of these numbers has three sig figs. But when I do this subtraction, I have 0.3 and I'm down to one significant figure. So you wanna be careful about that. When you add and subtract, the number of significant figures can change, right? So what you really wanna do is keep track of where that guess is and then round at the end. So I have a question about the uh, 9.1 uh, plus the 8.7. Yeah. Where would, would we round that up at all? Would we change anything about that? Where would the line be to cut that off like you did when you did 12? Well, you, in this case, you don't have to because all of your guesses are in the same decimal place. Oh, okay. okay. As long as you, see, I, I had to do it here with the 13.56. By the way, am I yelling? <laughs> I can't tell if, if I'm screaming through the screen or if the, if the volume's okay. But, um, so if I'm not good, okay. Um, so on the 13.56, since I had two guesses, I have to cut it off. But since I only have one guess here, I'm done. I don't have to do anything. Okay. All right, good question. All right, now for multiplication and division. It's actually the same rule. And if you were to multiply and divide by hand, you'd see that it's the same rule, but nobody does that anymore. So for multiplication and division, it's just better to do it operationally. Um, your answer will have the same number of sig figs as the number with the fewest. So um, your answer All right, so what that means is if I take the number 138.64, which has five sig figs, and I multiply that by 3.8, which has two sig figs, right? And I do this on my calculator. Okay, my calculator says, I'm gonna just do it over here says 526.832, but I only get two sig figs. So I'm gonna to have to call that 530, right? And again, I know it's counterintuitive because you've always been taught that more digits is better, more digits is better, but that's not true in, anymore in this case when significant figures are involved. You're only as precise as your least precise measurement. So this is actually a more correct answer, the 530, because it correctly conveys the right where the precision is. If you, if you actually did this by hand, realize that any number you multiply this eight by is a guess. I'll get to your question in just a second, all right? Um, so that means it, it's gonna come out in the, in the tens place. Yes, go ahead, Nora. Um, what's the word, is that, Five st. What does that say on that? That one? That says five significant figures. It's SF. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh huh. So, uh, in five thirty, the only two significant figures are the five and the three, and so that's why it's only two significant figures, like three point eight. Right. So the right. zero right. doesn't count. The zero is not significant because it's after a significant figure, but not after a decimal point. If you put it in scientific notation, if you wanted to do that, it would be 5.3 times 10 to the two. All right, I see uh, another hand. I don't know who was first. Uh, I was wondering why you only have like three, um, three numbers and you don't have like the decimals behind them. Here on the 530? Yeah. I actually yeah. only have two significant figures because the number 3.8 has two sig figs. So that means, that means I have to round it to two sig figs. I go to, I drop down to the least. Okay, okay so you get the one that has the fewest um, significant figures. Pardon me? So you, um, so the number that your answer is supposed to the numbers of the same significant. 
significant whatever figures. Has, whatever has the least sig figs, that's what you go to. Thank you. Does so, that help? So, right. Professor, it, the yeah. reason, so, the, so the reason why when you rounded, instead of going from 526.8, whatever, to 527 is because 527 would have three significant figures. So you that's went to right. the number that would have only two, correct? That's right. That's so right. then we have to keep like mindful of the number of significant figures and we have to like make the appropriate jump to That's the, correct. okay, I see. You are completely correct. Yes. I see another hand. I think it's Abigail. Or, oh, Matt, I'm sorry. I didn't. It's okay. Go ahead. Whoever's next, just jump in. It's hard for me to keep track. So, I think I'm following. Um, just to clarify, and this is unrelated to the problem, if we were to put at the end of 530, if you made it 5,303, then we would again now have three sig things, right? Because the zeros in between. If you had the number 5,503, 5,303, then there, that yeah. would have four sig figs. Or four because we are counting the zero now because it's in yeah, front. It goes between, right? Okay, cool. Just making sure. Okay, cool. Thank you. For the addition and subtraction, what if it's like 12 plus 5? If it 12 plus 5? A, yeah. What would be and the answer? If I did 12 plus 5, let me make some space here. Okay, then I'm going to do a bunch of problem solving, and this is going to come into play. Okay. If I do, um, if I was to go, come on. If I go 12 plus 5, that the 2 is a guess, the 5 is a guess, I have 17. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right. Now, what? Go ahead. I see a couple more hands. Go ahead. Um, so, I just want to make sure I understand when when you round it. I think I think someone said this. I just I couldn't really hear well. Uh -huh. But um, when you round it, you have to round it to the um. What, what do you round it to? Just the highest yeah. number. You round it to the correct number of significant figures. So the 526.832, as written, has six significant figures. But since we multiply by 3.8, which only has two significant figures, I have to round my answer to two sig figs. Oh, so that's why we have the 5.3, right? 500, oh. 5.3, right, exactly. Oh, okay. okay. So so do, thank you. Yeah, I'm going to do some more problem solving. And then I'm going to incorporate, we're going to put everything together with units and everything else. One more thing I want to say, I got to open this door back up. This morning gets fine. Are you two ladies done barking at everybody? All right. Um, significant figures only apply to measurements. So pure numbers will not affect your significant figure. So uh, now what are pure numbers? A number that is a number because it's a definition, like um, 100 centimeters in a meter. Why are there 100 centimeters in a meter? Because it's defined that way. So that 100 has an infinite number of sig figs, doesn't affect it. A number that's part of a formula. So the area of a triangle, one half of the base times the height, the one half doesn't affect the sig figs. A number that's derived by counting. So if I was gonna take the average, uh, uh, in experiment four, which we're going to do a, a few weeks from now, you'll weigh out 10 pennies and then take the average. When you divide by 10, that 10 doesn't affect your sig figs because it's exact. You counted 10, so there's no error. Now, it's not always obvious because you guys are learning this, and so some of it's a little bit, how do I know, you know if a number has sig figs or not? If you're not sure, you should ask me, does this number have sig figs or does it not? You know, if it's a, you know, it's a lot of, it's, there's a kind of a little gray area in there. So don't be afraid to ask, do sig figs affect this number, okay? All right, let me go um, into just some problem solving. So I'm get as far as I can, all right? This is the stuff that's on homework too, which is due on Monday, but we'll see what we get. All right, I'm gonna just do some problem solving. So density, is a physical property. Density is the amount of mass divided by the volume. So how much mass is the amount of matter, how much stuff, volume is the space it's in. So it's literally how much stuff divided by the space it takes up. 
So you can think of it like crowdedness, something that's really dense, very, very crowded, like solids. Particles in a solid are very, very dense. It's very dense. Uh, something that's not dense, the opposite of dense would be diffuse, would be a lot of, but not very much stuff in a lot of space. Uh, things will float if they're less dense than what they're floating in. So uh, a, a huge ship, like a, an ocean liner, floats in water, even though it's got you know steel and stuff in there. But that's because the, the volume of the ship is so big and there's a big air bubble in there, it's less dense than the water. Now, you can do this algebraically, D equals M over V. So I'm going to do two or three problems. And one or two of them, I'm going to do both. I think one of them, I'm going to do it both algebraically and with dimensional analysis, just so you can, you can, uh, you can see, contrast the two ways. All right. You can do things with dimensional analysis or algebra. I really don't care. But early on, it's good to practice with dimensional analysis because it, for many of you, it's a new technique. And it's very powerful when we do a lot more chemistry, we'll be using a lot more of it. So let's do a simple one. Um, what is the density? Of a solid with a mass of 8.4163 grams if it takes up two point five four milliliters. All right. So this one's pretty straightforward. Now, a couple other things is we know we know what density is. You should know this formula. D equals M. This one's going to be as straightforward as it can be. D equals M over V. Now, sometimes it's hard to tell what's the mass and what's the volume. In this case, the mass is obvious because it says a mass of. And then the volume, it doesn't say has a volume of. But this is where units can help you. We know, well, obviously, this is the other number, too. But you can see milliliters is a unit of volume. So that's going to be your V. And then we do the math. And now this is, say, fix 8.4163 divided by 2.54. So uh, I'm going to round it to three significant figures because of the 2.54. So this is going to be 3.31 grams per mil. All right. Questions about that one? Uh, quick question. Um, we won't round because it's already at one or it's already rounded down, basically? Well, my calculator says 3.31350397, right? But my calculator right. is a liar because I'm not that precise. So the bottom line is I have five sig figs at the, on the, in the numerator. I have three in the, in the denominator. It's division. So I have to go to three sig figs. So I did round. So we already I rounded. I rounded and... from the display on my calculator. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, what volume? of lead and lead has a density of 11.35, has a mass of 91.762 grams. All right, so I'm gonna do this one um, with dimensional analysis, and then I'm going to do it with algebra. You do is not that, obviously have to solve problems two different ways, but I just, this is kind of about problem solving. Is that 11.35? That's an 11.35, yes. Okay. Let me make that a little bit cleaner. Yeah, that better? All right. So if I'm going to do this with dimensional analysis, all right, I want my answer to be the best way to do dimensional analysis. The first step in dimensional analysis is always, always, always write down the units of the answer. So the question is what volume? And also, I've got two numbers here, right? Which one do I do first? Do I add them? Do I multiply them? 
Again, it's not necessarily obvious. So dimensional analysis almost will tell you what to do. So I want my answer to be in a unit of volume. So if I look, I have grams, grams, and milliliters. Milliliters is a unit of volume. Since I said what volume, any volume unit is fine. So I want my answer in milliliters. Now, you see that the 11.35 grams milliliters is in the denominator. I want milliliters in the numerator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put milliliters on the top and the 11.35 grams on the bottom. Okay, why can I do that? Because that's dimensional analysis. That basically tells me I'm going to divide by the 11.35. Now I've got the right unit in the right place. Now I need to make grams cancel. So I want grams in the top. And you see I have grams right here. So 91.762 grams. My grams will cancel. How many sig figs should I get? Two or three. Which one? Or Four, should you get four? Four, four. 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 right, 11.35 has four. So, my, so I'm gonna have 8.085 milliliters, All right? So in this case, it's telling you, and you see how I, in this case, I don't even need to know the formula. So the advantage to dimensional analysis is you don't necessarily need to memorize a formula for this. You should know, you should know it though, but uh, you can do the problem without knowing the formula. The disadvantage, if there is one, is you have to be diligent about labeling your units, right? Because you have to, and I'll tell you on an exam, um, if you gave me, if you wrote 8.085 and you didn't write the units, I, would I will take a point off for that, right? Because it's not a complete answer. Now, if I'm doing this algebraically, okay, again, you can do it either way. D equals M over V. Yes, I see a hand. Jay. Um, yeah, so when I was thinking about this problem, um, I thought I would do, I thought what you'd have to do would be like the density divided by the grams, you know? So like it would be like 11.35, um, grams per milliliter divided by um, the mass. Well, that's um, why see, that's a very common mistake. So that's why um, the units kind of tell you why that you can't do that. Okay, because I thought since since the density has like both the the mass and the volume, um, right. you want you would, the volume in this case, right? Right, you would use the grams to cancel out the the grams and the density, and then you'd just be left with the milliliters. So that's why I thought. It would be that way. Yeah, but you would have milliliters in the bottom that way. Okay. Okay. Now, if I'm going to do it algebraically, I want volume, right? So just a, just a little algebra review. I want volume by itself. So I'm going to go volume times density is the mass. And then I want the volume by itself. So volume would be mass over the density. And then I look at the problem. Well, the mass is obvious, 91.5. 762 grams. Now, I didn't say, by the way, density equals. So how do we know this is a density? Well, that's why you have to know the units will tell you that this is a density, All right? And so then I'm gonna put the 11.35 down here. And obviously I'll still get the same answer. All right. You see the units cancel. I get milliliters in the denominator of the denominator, which is of course the numerator. So, you know, those of you who, whose algebra is very, very strong, you know, you could go from probably go from here to here in one step without the intermediate step. And if your algebra is strong, you know, you spent time learning algebra, feel free to use it. But I suggest to you, even if your algebra is really good, learn how to do this because now you've got two different ways to solve a problem, right? And which way should you use? You should use whatever is easiest. And the other thing, problem solving, I'll get your questions in just a second. Problem solving is very experiential. Uh, so sometimes you try a problem, if you know there's more than one way to do it, you try a problem one way and it gets really, really hard. So then, okay, well, let's try it another way. And the next, the other way you try it is much easier. And then remember that the next time you see a problem like that. Matt, you have your hand up. Jay, is your hand still up or is it up again? No, it's my bad, sorry. Uh, sorry, two parts of my question. First, um, in dimensional analysis, uh, because we want milliliters, um, 
we will always put that in the numerator because we want that on its own. Yeah, because we want it in the in the numerator of the answer. Absolutely. If we wanted grams, we'd put grams and the no liters would go on the bottom. That's right. Okay. And then um, you put in the algebraic side, uh, V times D equals M. So, um, <clears throat> but that calculates the V equals mass um, divided by density. Does the V D equals M have anything to do with V equals M divided by density? Like, is that like the reverse way? Like, could I time? Well, all I'm doing, all I'm doing is I'm rearranging this equation. So what I did is I want, I want the question was what's the volume? So I want V by itself. So I multiplied each side by two. Oh, I see. Yeah, I just, I, I just, I multiplied each side by V because it was in the denominator and I want it in the numerator. And then I divided each side by D to get rid of the D. Right, right. You used algebra V D equals M. So you just, yeah, yeah. you divided that. I see, I see where that uh, came from. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Someone asked in the chat about having a page of notes for exams and I don't do that. But we'll we'll do some we'll do an exam some exam review. Well, I have a, I have a, a review sheet. And we can spend some time, you know, like a little at least part of a class period doing some exam review. Or right, I'm going to do one more that's got a little bit more love to it. All right, um, and got a couple unit conversions in it. Um, let's see. What is the map? I'm going to trying to think about space. Can I erase this up here? You guys got that up there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to erase it. Because then we have the whole page. Okay. Um, what is the mass? So this one's got a little bit more to it, but that's okay. You guys can do this. Of a, but that's, and that's why we're doing this of a gold ball with a radius. of let's say five i'm just making it up as i go along all right five millimeters um, and then i'll give you the density of gold gold is au is what's gold it's 12 point something 19 i'm sorry 19.3 grams per mil and the volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed. So this is information I'd give you in the problem. I do not expect you to know volume formulas, all right? So I would give you this. I think volume of a rectangular solid is reasonable to expect people to know. So if I gave you a cube, or something, but you know what? During the test, I always tell students you can come up to the desk and you can ask me anything during the test. I might not answer it, <laughs> you know, but uh, you know, you can certainly ask. All right, is that now, pi r cubed? That's an r cubed, pi r cubed. Okay, all right. So this problem has two different numbers, two equations, right all sorts of stuff in here. So where do I start this problem? Now, again, some of you who are more advanced problem solvers probably are going, oh, of course you do da, da, da. Wonderful if that's you. Yeah, go ahead, Matt. We need to um, label the units, so grams and milliliters, right? Yeah, you want your, yeah. And we're trying to find the mass, so we're trying to, it would, I put like equals G on the far right. Very good. So that's what I'm going to do. So in a problem like this, where there's all this stuff, and I hear this from students all the time, I have a lot of trouble with word problems. I don't even know where to start this problem. And if that's you, you're probably in the majority. So I say, look, the question is, what's the mass? And so just like Matt said, let's go right to grams. All right, so I want my answer in grams. Now, where do I have grams? I do. I know that there's 19.3 grams in a milliliter, all right? So I've got the right unit in the right place. So now I have to make milliliters go away. So how am I gonna do that? I don't have milliliters anywhere in the problem, but I do know this, milliliters are a unit, what are milliliters a unit of? Um, a unit of mass, distance. Volume. 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 So let's see if we can find the volume. All right, let's start there. So I'm gonna go down here, 
V is four thirds pi R cubed. R is five. So I'm gonna just do that 5.0 millimeters. And that's whole thing cubed, all right? Now, I'm gonna do this on my calculator. Uh, you don't need to know pi. If you have a scientific calculator, it has a pi button. So five cubed times pi times four divided by three. And pi and the four thirds do not affect your sig fig. So this has two sig figs. Now it's not a bad idea keeping an extra digit and rounding later. So this is gonna be 524 cubic millimeters, all right? So that's my volume. I'm gonna make a note that I only have two sig figs. All right, just I'm gonna note that to myself. So I'm gonna put that over here for a minute. Um, professor, for um, to note sig figs, do it, can't we use that line? Like you an can under do whatever you want, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, use, I use, just use a little mark when I'm doing it internally to help me keep track of things. Yeah, Nora. Wouldn't it be three sig figs because of the four? No, because 5.0 has two. The four thirds doesn't affect it. Oh, That's okay. A constant. Because it's the multiplying. Well, you're multiplying, so you go to the, the least number of sig figs. So it has two sig figs. Okay, thank you. Now, now all that's left is unit conversion here. This is a little bit complicated, but we did a little bit of this. All right. So I have millimeters cubed and milliliters. Those do not cancel. So, so <laughs> now it's just let's play with it. What do I know about milliliters? I know that one milliliter is one cubic centimeter. That was in uh, a lecture or two ago. All right. So now what I would like is I could do this if I had, um, well, I could do this in a couple of steps. Since I have two unit, two letters, two letters, I, I need cubic centimeters on the top. Right? So I'm gonna play with this a little bit. I need cubic centimeters. Now, what do I know? I know that one centimeter, what I know is I know that's 10 to the minus two meters. See that? How do I know that? Because I memorized it. But I want cubic centimeters. Let me just erase this for a second, okay? I want cubic centimeters. So I know one centimeter quantity cubed is 10 to the minus two meters quantity cubed. So that means one cubic centimeter is 10 to the minus six cubic meters. And why am I relating it to meters? Because that's all I know. If you happen to know the relationship between meter, millimeters and centimeters, it's a little easier, but I don't know, it's one, it's, a, it's one step less. But I don't expect you to know that. So I want cubic centimeters on the top, And then the cubic meters will be on the bottom. And so I've solved one problem, but I've created another. But now all I need is the relationship between cubic meters and cubic millimeters. Because you can always relate the two letter to the one letter. So I can do the same thing because I know the relationship between millimeters and meters. One millimeter. Oops. is 10 to the minus third meters. We want it cubed. So the same idea as over here, one millimeter cubed is 10 to the minus three. I'm putting in every step, okay? Cube, that means one millimeter cubed because one cubed is one is 10 to the minus ninth meters cubed. Sounds like a really small amount, but a cubic millimeter is, you know, that it's, it would be a cube this big and a cubic meter, right? So this will be 10 to the minus ninth on the top and this will be one on the bottom. But now everything will work. And so now it's just math, all right? So I'm gonna do this on my calculator. 524 times one times 10 to the minus ninth, one E divided by 
times 19.3. So I get uh, 10. And I get two sig figs because the 524 only has two sig figs. Let me put an arrow there just to make note. This comes out to be 10. And because zero is significant, I'm going to put a line over the zero. All right, let me, before I answer questions, let me walk you through this problem again, and then I'll take questions about it, okay? So just looking at this, it looks like it's really complicated, but you know, it's kind of that old, old adage, the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step, right? If you were gonna go up a huge flight of steps, you couldn't do it in one step unless you are a superhero, and then you'd have to wear a cape and tights, and that's just, you know. Um, but, um, but you just go one step at a time and just plug away and try things. And don't be afraid to get stuck and ask questions. So I start the problem, but here's the question. It's all written out, got nouns and verbs and all sorts of numbers. So I say, well, I don't know where to start, but I do know that I need the mass. So I'm gonna to go to grams. And I know that I have the mass in the density. So I'm gonna put the density here. Now I have to get rid of the, the milliliters I don't have milliliters in the problem, so it's not obvious, but I do know that milliliters is a volume. Also, I have volume here. I have a formula for volume, so that's a hint that maybe I'm going to need that formula, right? So then down here, I calculated the volume. Four thirds pi r cubed, the radius is this. So five cubed, 125 times pi times four divided by three comes out to be this. And that's 524 cubic millimeters. Now, I have to make that unit go away because I have cubic millimeters and I have milliliters. So I start with, well, what do I know about milliliters? I know that a milliliter is the same as a cubic centimeter. And I chose that because, you know, I can centimeters and millimeters both have an M in them. So then I got milliliters gone, but now I got to get rid of cubic centimeters. Now, I can't relate cubic centimeters to cubic millimeters. And actually, if you did know, if you know that there's 10 millimeters in a centimeter, you could do this in one less step. But I don't expect you to know that. I expect you to know this. So, so what I did is I said, well, I can relate centimeters to meters. I know this. And if I have it linear, I can cube it. So I cubed it because I wanted centimeters cubed. But if I cube the unit, I have to cube the number. I cube the unit, I cube the number. So one cubed is one. 10 to the minus two cubed is 10 to the minus six. So I plug that in and now the cubic centimeters are gone, but now I have cubic meters. So now I have to relate cubic millimeters to cubic meters. And so that's what I did here. Again, I don't know the cubic relationship, but I do know the linear one because I memorized it. And so because I want it cubed, I have to cube the unit, but if I cube the unit, I cube the number. So same thing here. So one cubed is one, 10 to the minus three cubed is 10 to the minus nine. And then I plugged it in. And at this point, it's math. And just so you know, when I put questions like this on a test, this would probably be a 10 point question. If you give me the setup and you don't get the final answer, you've got eight out of 10. The, the other two points are getting the right answer to the right number of sig figs. I'll even give you this. If you said, if you did all this, but you didn't do the math, but you said the answer will have two sig figs and be in grams, I'd give you nine out of 10. But you want 10 out of 10. All right, so I've gone through it. Let me take questions. I don't know who's first, so just jump in. Um, yeah, this is probably something I haven't learned the first time around. I actually confused myself with my own notes, but um, are we gonna cover this more into depth or is this as far as we're going to go on this well i'm only going to do this one example today but when we do some uh, there's some of this on the homework and so you can ask me in office hours um i think i have it in the schedule that we're going to have uh, a, a day where we can do some uh like review for the exam so we i think there's something like this on the exam review so i can do more questions but i want to do it in office hours because i do want to move along but yeah, right. try it, play with it a little bit. There's some like this on the homework. And then, you know, certainly that's what office hours are for. And then we're we happy to do problems like this in office hours. Okay. Uh, I don't know who's next. I see. When you were calculating the volume, 
uh, you multiplied by five millimeters and that only has two significant figures, correct? 5.0 has two significant figures, right? So then when you got the answer, you said that the four over three doesn't affect the number of significant, significant, significant right. figures. So why, did, why didn't you do like 520 millimeters cubed as the answer? Why did you do 524? Oh, um, I could have. I could have rounded it. It's a good habit to, to keep an extra digit and round at the end. But realistically, if that confuses you, just round it and then do it later. So if our you final as you go, typically, so the question you're asking is, should I round as I go, round at each step, or should I wait and round at the end? Everyone is going to tell you it's better to keep an extra digit and round at the end. Mm -hmm. However, I'm going to tell you, and I agree with that, because rounding errors can compound. I mean, if you round it up and then you round up and then you round up, but realistically, they won't because the rounding rules are written. So half the time you round up and half the time you round down. So if you wanted to just call it 520, if we do the math, right, watch this, I'll do it. Divided by 524 times 520, I still get 10. Okay. Yeah. So, so thank if you. you want to round and then do it, that's okay. Okay. I see another hand, go ahead. Um, um, so, sorry, oh, go, ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. So, Professor, I want to make sure um, I got the order of this down uh, real quick. The reason we chose uh, 5.0 millimeters to convert or to find the volume was because it's millimeters to milliliters. No, because it says it has a radius of see this up here. Yes. And the, the, uh, the, to get the volume, you were given a formula. You were told it's a ball. And the volume of a ball of the sphere, this is the formula for the volume of a sphere. And okay, so the so volume of the sphere, you need the radius. So we plugged that in because that's R in this equation. Okay. So then from there, um, we would next step would be to get rid of the milliliters, then get rid of the centimeters, then get rid of the millimeters, and it leaves us with grams in the very end. You got it. Okay. All right. Uh, Nora, I, I think this puts it in order of who asked, raise your hand. I think Nora's next. I'm not sure about that. Well, I'll oh. get you. Um, so I'm just looking at like the measurement chart that we have, which was this, you know, uh, centimeters, which was the 10 to the power of negative two um, to become like a meter. And then was it millimeter or milligram? That's 10 to the power of negative three. Well, so the, this M right here, this means That's 10 millimeter. to the minus three. So a milligram is 10 to the minus three grams. A milliliter, oh. a milliliter is 10 to the minus three liters. A millimeter is 10 to the minus three meters. So 10 to the minus three meters. So are they all the same? It just depends on whatever. Um... Yes. Sorry. Yes. And then if you have, if you have a unit like this with two letters, the first letter actually represents a number. I see. That M and means 10 to the minus three. That C means 10 to the minus two. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. And then, oh, sorry. Uh, oh, no, I, I wasn't sure if you were done. Go ahead. Oh, um, for the top part where um, you show like all of you know, that part, <laughs> that yeah. equation, are those all just conversions where you're trying yes. to convert it from the millimeter to a gram? Yeah, these things here, these three things right here are basically converting milliliters to cubic millimeters. Converting milliliters, wait. I, I had to convert milliliters. I had to make milliliters cancel cubic millimeters. And so the, I had to go through all of this. This is a, this is a challenging problem, no two ways. So about. you're trying to make um, a cube, uh, sorry, cubic millimeters to a gram, right? I'm trying to make cubic millimeters cancel out. Yeah, I'm trying to get rid of that unit, yes. Oh, okay. And um, will, will there be like as complicated of an equation on exams? Oh yeah, this is fair game. Okay. That's why you have the homework. The homework will give you an opportunity to practice it. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, who's next? I see, uh, it looks like, I'm hoping I pronounced the name right. Uh, uh, Alethea? Uh, yeah. Um, um, so I was just, how did you, what did you do? Did you do 524 multiplied by, what did, I'm not sure what you did. To so I went 524 times 10 to the minus ninth divided by 10 to the minus sixth 
times 19.3. So on my calculator, okay? I'm a, uh, and then for calculator stuff, uh, you know, you can, uh, okay, I went 524 yeah. times one E minus nine divided by, because this is in the bottom, one E minus, the minus is in a, is a key. That's a, a key, minus six times 19.3 equals. That's the, the keystrokes I used on my calculator. Okay, I got it, thank you. All right, uh, Abigail, I'm gonna take the next two questions and then I'm gonna uh, go on to the next thing because I do wanna, get, I wanna try to get to a certain place. Go ahead. For the volume, why is it five? 524. So I know you multiplied Why it. Why is it but 524? What, yeah. What if I plug it in directly instead of rounding it to 524? When, when, when you plugged it in, what'd you get? Um, it's 523.59. Is it fine if I do that? Like if Yeah, I but as long as you off? round to two sig figs at the end. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, actually, I think I kept extra digits in my calculator. Okay, uh, next person, Burhan Nudin. I'm gonna. I'm yeah. Gonna um, go I just wanted to ask: Could this be done through algebra or no? Without the. Well, you, you could do the, the problem is you can't really do the unit conversion through the algebra. We're using algebra here. You still have to do the unit conversion, and the unit conversion you're probably going to have to do dimensional analysis. So this oh, okay. part here. Right from from here to here, you're going to have to use dimensional analysis. Did that answer your question? Y yes, thank you. Okay, let me move on to just some other problem solving. All right, and like I said, there's some of this on homework too, and so I, and as you're going through it, you know, by all means, that's what office hours are for. I'm more than happy to. You know, do uh, office, I have an office hour today. Uh, to, I have some tomorrow. Right. Okay. Uh, this is a different, a, a different thing. E, e is times 10 to the. Someone put in the chat. So the e, e key means it depends on your calculator. This means times 10 to the on the calculator. All right, I wanna just do something relating between, um, between heat and temperature. So heat and temperature are not the same thing. Heat is a form of energy. And, and the, the relationship between heat and temperature is this. And this is really more about the problem solving. Let me show you what these are. Q is a heat change. Right, and the unit for heat, heat is a form of energy. The unit is a J, it's called a joule. It's abbreviated with a capital J. That's the SI unit, that's a J. Uh, you might be familiar with another unit of heat called a calorie. Uh, I, we don't use calories in this class. A calorie is actually defined as the amount of energy to raise the temperature of one gram of water, one Celsius degree. I don't care if you remember that, so I'm not gonna write it down. But people count calories when they're looking at their weight. Just for fun, why do we relate a unit of heat, a unit of energy to gaining weight? Anyone know? Metabolism? Yeah, exactly. Humans, mammals, store energy uh, by forming chemical bonds and making a molecule called fat. And so the bottom line, by the way, because y'all are young, but when you guys get older, your lifestyle catches up to you, shall we say, and you start having to watch things a little bit better. Um, uh, the bottom line is the law of conservation of energy. If you can, or law of conservation of matter, if you consume more energy than you burn, your body's going to save it for later. But if you burn more energy than you consume, you're going to, you know, it's got to come from somewhere and then you'll take it out of, out of storage. 
right? And just so you know, if you sat down and ate five pounds of chocolate, the most weight you could gain would be five pounds. If you put five pounds in your body, that's the most you could gain. I see, is your hand still up? Burhanuddin? Is there another question or is your hand just still up? Okay, I, I just wasn't sure. M is the mass. S is called the specific heat, which is a physical property. You do not need to memorize specific heats. If you need them, I will give them to you. Oops, heat. Uh, specific heat is defined as the amount of energy, E for energy, required to raise the temperature By the way, mass would be in grams up here. Of one gram of the substance, whatever that substance is, one Celsius degree. All right, and so it's the amount of energy required to heat up whatever a gram, whatever the substance is, to raise its temperature one degree. How much energy does it take? That's what the specific heat is. Specific heat, the unit for specific heat is joules per gram degree Celsius. And just to put it in perspective, um, things that have really high specific heats, like water has a pretty high specific heat. It takes a lot of energy to get it hot, but if it gets hot, it stays, it holds on to its heat very well too. And you know this from experience, right? Heating water takes a lot of energy. Hot water stays hot for a while, all right? Metals have very low specific heats. Metals get hot really quickly, but they also cool off very quickly. They don't hold heat very well, all right? That's just some by the way. Uh, one of the more expensive things you do in your home in terms of heating is heating water. And then this, uh, the Greek letter delta, this letter delta does not mean a variant of uh, COVID. Delta means change in. That's an uppercase delta, change in. And T is temperature. So delta T would be a change in temperature. And so it would be defined as TF minus TI. I'm a person, I always like using descriptive subscripts. So F is final. I is initial. All right, so if, so, and so if you really think about this, you could actually have a negative number if something cools off, right? If something was at 100 degrees and it went down to 20 degrees, this would be negative 80, which means your Q would be a negative number. So it's very interesting, the concept of negative, there is no such thing as negative. Negative is an artificial mathematical construct to, to explain, it's a mathematical way to explain direction. So you can't have negative amount of heat, but what we do is we define if heat goes in, then it's positive heat. If heat goes out, it's negative. And as you take more science, you'll see this all over the place. Uh, in physics, they'll say up is positive, down is negative. Speeding up is positive, slowing down is negative. It's just a mathematical way to explain um, uh, direction, all right? So these are just what the parameters are. I'm gonna do three problems, All right? I wanna get them in your notes. I'm gonna write the problem down here and then I'll do it up here. This is a bit more algebraic because we have an equation. Let's just do first of all. And by the way, a joule is not really very much energy. Uh, just to put it in perspective, if you read your electric bill, your electric bill is in kilowatt hours. A kilowatt hour is 3.6 million joules. A joule would be about the amount of energy if I took, um, let's say I take, uh, I don't know, a, this magnifying glass. If I take this magnifying glass and I raise it up a meter in height, that's about a joule of energy. The letter or number before Celsius is a degree sign. Uh, down here, this is grams degree C. So that's grams degrees Celsius.
let's say you're going to heat up a gallon of water. Raise the joules with gram. Um, wait, what does that say? Joules over this here, gram. This specific heat is joules over grams degrees Celsius. Oh, okay. And this is this is for um, this is for what heat versus temperature. This is uh, to calculate heat changes. All right, so the question's written down here. I'll read it to you in case you can't read my handwriting. Let me erase this up here though. It says, it says, what is, how much heat is necessary to raise the temperature of 3,750 grams of water from 20 degrees C to 100 degrees C? And I'll give you that the specific heat for water, so that's S, specific heat for water is 4.184 joules per gram degree C. Again, do not waste brain space memorizing specific heats. I will give them to you in the problem, all right? So in this case, when you have something algebraic, it's a good idea to make a list of your variables. Q equals, M equals, S equals. Um, in this case, uh, we are given a final and an initial temperature. All right, so Q, that's what we're trying to find. All right, now we're not told it has a mass up, but which number is the mass? The mass right. would be 750. Very good, how do you know? Because um, you gave me the grams. That's right. Okay, so knowing your units even helps you with algebra. S is given, right? In this case, 4.184 joules per gram degree C. The final temperature is what it's two. So this is 100. And the initial temperature is 20.0. And these have, the, the, that, those zeros are significant. All right, so in this case, this is a pretty straightforward one. Q is MS delta T. Uh, delta T, remember, is TF minus TI. So in this case, we weren't told the temperature change. So we're going to maybe expand this out. MS TF minus TI. And so now I don't have to rearrange this because then after Q, it's my question mark. So I'm going to plug in the numbers. So the mass S and then 100.0 minus 20.0 degrees C. Now we have mixed operations here because we have addition subtraction. So this here is 80 degrees C. So I'm going to, I'm going to put in every step for you. Okay. And this is going to be 80.0. This has three sig figs because the zeros are significant. And so now I'm going to do the math on calculator. And this answer is going to have three sig figs because the 3750 has three. 4.184 has four and the 80.0 has three. So I'm gonna put this in scientific notation to make my life easier. So I get 1.26 times 10 to the sixth. And the units, grams cancel, degrees C cancel. I'm gonna get joules. So I get 1.26 times 10 to the sixth joules. That's a six up there. Yes. How did you enter this in your calculator? I literally went 3,750 times 4.184 times 80. Okay. Yep. Um, 
Wait, so for the canceling out, the grams cancel out the other grams and the Celsius cancels out the other Celsius? Degrees C cancel as well because degrees C is in the denominator and it's in the numerator here. And so I get joules, which is good because Q should be in joules. Oh, okay. This is weird that I'm writing the question down here and doing it on the top. I hope I have enough time to do the last one. I'm going to try. All right. Um, what is the final? Do we use water? Let's say uh, 26,841 joules of heat is put into, uh, let's make it 56.25 grams of water at, let's make it start at five degrees C, all right? All right, so I'm going to erase this. What does it say after it says temp temperature if? What is the final temperature if 26,841 joules of heat is put into 5625 grams of water at five degrees? All right, so we're going to be after the final temperature. It's still water. So the specific heat of water is 4.184. I gave it to you in the previous problem. Here, this number's Q. We know because it's joules, this is grams. TF is what we're after. And the initial temperature is 5.0. Now, uh, so I'm going to write the equation. Since we have two temperatures, it's going to be Tf minus Ti, like that. Yeah. Professor, sorry to interrupt. Real quick, the first one that we just did previous to this one, that's similar to the question how much water will be absorbed? And then this second question is like, what is the final temperature of yeah. water? Uh -huh. Okay, this yeah. is the second one. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay, now sometimes algebra is cleaner. It, sometimes you just plug in the numbers and then rearrange. Sometimes you rearrange and, and usually I rearrange and put in the numbers, but not always. So in this case, I'm going to rearrange it and then plug it in. But if you want to plug in the numbers and then rearrange, that's fine. But let me just kind of go through the algebra here. I want TF. So I'm going to divide each side by MS. This is a little algebra review. It'll be TF minus TI. And then if I want TF on its own, I'm going to add TI to each side. So Q over MS plus TI will be TF. All right, so now I'm going to start plugging in numbers. All right, so Q. Two six eight four one joules over five six two five grams times four point one eight four joules per gram degree C plus five point zero degree C is TF. Make some space. All right, so now I'm going to do the math. So this is all a div multiplication division. So when I do this, I'm going to go to four sig figs, two, six, eight, four, one, divided by 525. Whoops. Two, six, eight, four, one, divided by five. One more try. Five, six, two, five. All right. So this part here becomes 1.141. And notice that joules cancel, grams cancel, 
this comes out to be degrees C. So this is 1.141 degrees C plus 5.0 degrees C. Now, when I add these together, all right, one, just I'm gonna do it vertically so you can see it better. The 1.141, that one is my last sig fig. 5.0, the zero is my last sig fig. So this is gonna be 6.1. So remember when we add and subtract, it's not, it, it did go to two sig figs, all right? Let me give you just a minute. I have one more problem to do and I wanna get it done before class is over. I can do it without rushing, but I can take a quick question here. So all I did is I, I erased it and I broke the problem down, you know, just made a list of what my variables are, right, over here. Where am I here? And then I took the equation, I rearranged it to solve for the variable I wanted. And then at that point, it's just plugging in numbers and pushing buttons. So the Q went here, M, S, this is TI. I did the math, goes to four sig figs because this number has four, this has four, this has five. And then when I added them together, I'm gonna to go to the tenths place. Let me do one more. This one's harder. These are challenging though. But this, this, you know, this is problem solving and that's why we're doing this. And that's why I'm kind of taking my time on it. And that's why I have office hours. All right. Let me write the next problem up here. This one's a little bit different. What is the final temperature? If let's say, yeah, go ahead. Matt, I saw your hand go up. Sorry. Oh, okay. I'm just making sure I didn't miss something. I'm gonna write the problem down. I really don't like writing out this thing. You're doing great. Thanks. <laughs> to be fair, I've got a lot of practice, right? Sometimes it's like, that's something I never wanted to be good at. All right. So this one's a little bit different, all right? Uh, and just in the interest of time, I, well, I got, I got plenty of time. All right, so this in this question, we've got two different things, right? We are, we're basically what we're doing, this says, what is the final temperature if 250 grams of iron, this is the specific heat of iron at 210 degrees C is put into 2,385 grams of water, the specific heat of water at eight degrees C. All right, so we've got iron and water. What you're doing is you're putting hot metal in cold water and we wanna find the final temperature. Now, in this case, because there's two things, we wanna start with the law of conservation of energy. Law of conservation of energy says total amount of energy doesn't change, right? Another way of saying it is the sum of the heat changes will be zero. So we're gonna start here, the Q of the iron, whoops, plus the Q of the water will add up to zero. Now, a lot of people say heat loss equals heat gain. It's true, but it's not. Numerically, yes, but sign, no. One of them will be negative. Instead of doing that, just remember the sum of them has to be zero. 
So I'm just going to walk through this. Go ahead, quick question while I'm writing this. Yeah, Professor, um, can you repeat that uh, the for the sum the sum again? I have that written down, but like that was perfect. I needed that for my notes. Like yeah, the, the sum of the heat, the sum of the heat changes equals zero. So something's going to cool off, something's going to heat up, but the bottom line, the total amount of heat stays the same. So Q is ms delta T. We don't have the Qs. We're after the temperature. So we have the mass of the water. I'm sorry. Let's do this with the iron first. Okay, mass of the iron. I know this is going to look really messy. Specific heat of the iron. T F of the iron minus T I of the iron plus the mass of the water times specific heat of the water. T F of the water minus T I of the water equals zero. So all I did Q is M S delta T. Now, if you look at this question, this is one of the things you want to get from this class is you've got this, you know, two lines of words and numbers. Look at all these numbers and words, right? You can't let that intimidate you. But there's little things in the problem that will give you some hints as well. Now, you know, we have the mass of the iron. We have the specific heat of the iron. We have the initial temperature of the iron. We do not have the final temperature of the iron. We have the mass. I'm going to put a dot just by each thing that we have, okay? We have the mass of the water. We have the specific heat of water. We have the initial temperature of the water. So this looks like we have one equation and two unknowns, right? Because we don't have either final temperature. But what can you tell me? Well, we know there's only one final temperature. These two are the same. Now, how do we know that? One, experience, right? Have you ever put something hot, mixed something hot with something cold? Everything comes to the same temperature, right? Even when you were a little kid and you were making bath water, right? Uh, also, the question says, what is the final temperature, which implies only one temperature. So I'm going to erase the subscript here because there's only one final temp. Okay. Now, I'm going to plug in the numbers and I'm going to follow the sig figs. So just kind of watch this carefully. So this is 250 grams. The specific heat of the iron is 0.473 joules per gram degree C, Tf minus the initial temperature of the iron was 210 degrees C, okay? Plus for the water, and then I'll get your hands. The water, is, the mass of the water is 2385 grams, 4.184 joules per gram degree C, and then TF minus eight degrees C equals zero. Yeah, quickly, quick questions. So um, just a quick question about the, um, not symbols, like the, I don't know what you would call them, but see where it, like, you know where it says M and then FE and then S and then FE? Is that, is FE the iron? That's saying yeah, like mass of iron, iron and... I'm just, since so, I have two masses, I want to make sure I know which is which. Oh, so whenever you write like the, like mass or um, what's it called? Special, uh, sorry, specific heat. You put the um, element on the bottom. So you well, it's just helpful since you have two of them, you need to make sure you put the right one in the right place. So that's oh, what to do. Someone okay. else had a question? Thank you. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just multiply this out. Okay, now, by the way, if this is a 10 point question, if you get to here, you have eight, but you guys wanna get all the points. So I'm gonna just multiply these two, the 250 times the 0. 0.473. So I'm gonna, you know, kind of here. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. Let's do that math first. Notice here, the grams are gonna cancel. Here, the grams will cancel. Now, this number has four sig figs, this has three. This has four and this has four. So when I multiply this, 250, whoops, 250 times 0.473. I'm going to keep an extra digit, but make a note, okay? I only get three sig figs here. This comes out to be 118.25, but I'm going to just say 0.3. And this is joules per degree C. I'm going to make a note that I only have three sig figs, okay? And this is times TF minus 210 
BC. Similarly here, a good habit, keep the extra digit. And again, someone asked earlier, can I just round as I go? You can, but everyone's gonna tell you not to, okay? Now this goes 9978.8, so I get four sig figs. So I'm gonna call it 9978.8. Again, I only get four sig figs, and this is joules per degree C times TF minus eight. This is a, a degree sign. Go ahead. I see a question. Um, so then my question was the 250, you said that it has three significant figures. 250 has four sig figs. Oh, really? Yeah, the 250.0, that, zero, that zero is significant. So then how do we differentiate when the a number has like multiple sig figs or if it follows like the rule that if the zero is before the decimal point or whatever then well that 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 that's how we know this zero here is after a sig fig it's after the five and after a decimal point so it's significant this zero is in between uh how but then how is the zero after the decimal after a significant value if it's after zero, I thought usually it would have it doesn't to doesn't matter how far, it doesn't matter how far. So yeah, the, the zero is after the five. Okay. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. And the two ten point zero same thing. Uh, let, let me, let me finish this and then I'll take, well, what quick questions, go ahead. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna distribute this through and I'm gonna do the same thing here. All right, go ahead and ask your question though while I'm writing. Uh, it's not really a question. It's like it's specifying. So like um, um, the decimal point at the end basically means that that zero is like it, um, it counts as like um, making it more precise, I guess. So that's what like- It tells you it, how precisely we measure. Yeah. So that's why it's, it's um, that's why it's significant. Right. And then I'm taking the 118 times 210. So that's gonna be a big number. It gets three sig figs. So I'm gonna go two, four, eight, four, oh, but I only have three sig figs. And this is joules because you have the degree C cancels with the 210. And then I have 9978.8, okay, four sig figs, joules per degree C. And by the way, one more thing uh, we talked about, does my answer make sense? What can you tell me about the final answer as far as what its value should be? I'm gonna multiply the 9978 times eight. So this only has two sig figs now, 79,830. Let's go 79,800 joules equals zero. This has two sig figs, all right? So 9978.8 times eight is this, 8.0 has two sig figs. So the final answer, by the way, should be between eight and 210, right? Because if I put hot metal in cold water, it won't end up hotter than the metal or colder than the water. And that's the, does my answer make sense? So now I'm gonna combine the like terms. So I'm gonna take the 118 and the 978 and I'm gonna add them together. So this, my guess is in the ones place, this, my guess, is in the ones place. So I'm going to go to the ones place. So that comes out 10097. Uh, I'm going to keep the extra digit. Joules per degree C times TF minus, I'm going to combine the double underlines. The 24840 and the 79800. The guess is in the hundreds place. Here, the guess is in the thousands place. 24800 plus, whoops, I'm sorry, 24840 plus 79800. So I get 104640. Here's my guess. I'm just going to go 500. Wait, 104, 
okay? Joules equals zero. And so then looks like crazy numbers, right? One, zero, zero, nine, seven, that's a nine. Like one joules per degree C times TF. This number has one, two, five sig figs equals 105000 joules. This number has two sig fig, wait. Actually, one, two, three, four. This number actually has three sig figs, my bad. There. Okay. And then TF will just be when I divide. So this has three sig figs, this has five sig figs. I get 10.4. We're dividing uh, joules over grams of Celsius by just joules, right? Yeah, we're taking the 105 and dividing it by the 10097. All right. I'm going to stop. Obviously, I'm out of time. There's two minutes left in class. So, those of you who have to go, I'm just going to answer questions now. If you have to go, I understand that you got another class to click into. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to answer questions. And then on, uh, th and this will get you through homework too. All right. So, uh, but I'll start with questions on, on Monday. And I'm going to change the due date on homework too. How about I just push it to, you know, we don't meet on Tuesdays, but I'll push the due date to Tuesday. So it won't be, well, it doesn't matter. You know, I, I'll just leave it open. So if you haven't done it, you want to turn it in Monday, that's great. I'll just make sure it doesn't cut off. I'm not going to go in and change any dates. But if you turn it in on Tuesday, it won't be late. So if you have questions, All right? I'm going to turn off the recording and then I'm going to hang around and answer questions about this. All right, let me just do this real quick and I'll turn it on the share again. I just got to turn off the recording. Okay.